A couple months ago, I came home after morning prayers, parked in the driveway on the side of my house, walked up these stairs from the basement, went into the kitchen, said good morning to my wife. She said, did you take out the garbage bag? I said, what garbage bag? She said, you're kidding, right? I said, I don't know what you're talking about. She said, I left a garbage bag on the top of the stairs. How could you possibly have missed it? I retraced my steps and sure enough, there was a garbage bag sitting at the top of the stairs. The only way I could have gotten past it would have been to have taken a giant step over it or to have contorted my body to squeeze past it. And yet it didn't register. I didn't see it. Yes, I'm sure at some level deep in my brain there was a message that went off of object in way must avoid. But the synapses didn't fire any further. I didn't get the additional message of that's garbage bag. Obviously my wife left it there so that I can take it outside. And I was thinking that it's such a great story before Rosh Hashanah because that's what Rosh Hashanah is all about. God is everywhere in the world and in our lives. It's so easy to see him and his hand and yet we don't. How can we possibly miss him? And I'm not just talking to the atheists who allegedly don't believe in him until they're in a foxhole or until they're having surgery the next day. I'm talking to us. I'm talking about people who do believe in God and yet we get stuck in traffic and we blame ways. We get embarrassed in public and we want to throttle the person that did it. Yes, you have to work it out with that person. Hopefully they'll apologize. If they don't, hopefully we'll forgive, especially this time of year. But if you were embarrassed in public or otherwise wronged, God wanted it to happen. It was supposed to happen to you. It's a message, it's a lesson. And then good things happen. It's a raise, a windfall, a deal goes through, get the acceptance letter to the school you're trying to get into, and we pat ourselves on the back. It was our ingenuity. It was our creativity, our brain power, our persistence. It was, but all those talents came from God. And even with all those talents, it doesn't happen, can happen without his say so. It's not just the British people who are getting ready to coronate a king. The Jewish people are going to coronate a king on Rosh Hashanah. It's two days where we sit and reflect and remind ourselves that God didn't just create the world and then disappear. He's here all the time running the show, but the world show, an individual by individual show. It's interesting. There are these so-called aseris yamei teshuva, the 10 days of repentance. Even someone who's math challenged, who looks at a calendar will see that Rosh Hashanah is part of those 10 days. The first two days of the 10 days of repentance are the two days of Rosh Hashanah. And yet, go look at the prayers of Rosh Hashanah. You won't see anything about repentance. We don't do any of these like we do on Yom Kippur. So why are the first two days of Rosh Hashanah considered the first two days of the 10 days of repentance? And the answer is because in Rosh Hashanah, we take the necessary first step, we're recognizing God. You first have to recognize that he created the world and created us and has certain expectations, certain guidelines, all of them incredibly reasonable when you think about everything that he does for us. Once you recognize that, then you can start reflecting on how you may have fallen short, how we may have fallen short of his expectations. I hope all of us have a happy and healthy and sweet new year. And I hope we all get inscribed for another year in the book of life. Ksiva v'chasima tova.